Hello everybody, and welcome back to the Call of Duty 5 World at War tutorial series, uh, except we are not going to be doing mapping in this little mini-series. We are going to be doing some modding and some scripting, and the reason I'm bringing this is Black Ops 3, as I have covered earlier, is going to be dropping some modding tools and mapping tools for the PC, and it's going to be really fun, and we're going to need to know how to do stuff, okay? So we're going to get right into it. So, GSC, this is what this is. Some of you may recognize this. It looks very similar to C++, and the reason for that is it is kind of similar to C++, except for a few major differences, which we're going to cover in a little bit. But first, let me introduce GSC. GSC stands for Game Script Code, uh, I believe. I believe it's that. I can't be I can't remember exactly. Um, anyways, it has been used for many years. It has been developed by Activision, and it is used in the Call of Duty engine. It has been used, f like, literally forever since COD 3. It's in World at War. It's in Mar COD 4. It's in Black Ops and Black Ops 2. It's in Black Ops 3. It's in every game. Um, as per, you know, uh, earlier games, these were actually commonly used to mod. Um, many mod menus and other cheats and uh, and hacks were actually developed in GSC, and it was done via something called a fast file. Um, but after Modern Warfare 2, they learned their mistake, and they decided not to do that anymore. Um, but they still use game script code for actually like coding the maps and general behavior of the game. But uh, um, it's a lot harder to mod with, and it's and it's it's since modding has switched to actual C++. Um, but anyways, I just thought I'd give it a little introduction, and this applies to both COD 5 and Black Ops 3. There might be some slight, you know, function differences, uh, and there should be a reference. Um, if they release mod tools and mapping tools without a reference, I am going to send a lot of mean. Well, no, I'm I'm just going to be very upset at them because that is bad to do. Uh, you release references so people can actually use your stuff. And yeah, so other than that, it applies to both. It hasn't really changed much over the years. So it's uh, kind of a perfect time to release this, right in time for Black Ops 3. Yeah, so anyways, um, I'm just going to be covering the basic program structure in this video. I'm not going to cover, you know, what these different functions do, how to code a function, um, all of these different things. I'm going to cover the syntax probably in the next video, but right now I'm just going to go over the overall structure of the file. Okay, so right up here we have includes with hashtags or pound symbols or wherever you want to say it. These are very similar to C++. They're actually pretty much exactly the same with the exception that they don't have the um, the quotes or the angular brackets. And all this is for is including external scripts. You don't include the extension and um, and it looks relative. Okay, so you have common scripts utility. That is commonly included in the scripts. You're probably going to want to include that all the time. Maps utility and map zombie mode utility. That's for if you're doing zombies. Um, and these, you know, these provide the functions that we are going to need, um, such as wait till and and all of those kinds of things. Um, like I said, I'm not going to go too in depth in this tutorial, but these are includes, they are PPDs, and they're kind of they're similar to C++ in that aspect. And knit, this can be kind of thought of as the main entry point for GSC. I believe init is the default function called. Um, most of the time for your custom scripts unless you're writing external scripts and like I said I'm not going to get that advanced today but anyways this is called and what this is basically doing right now level thread on player connect that is threading the function on player connect which we have to find down here for the entire level for all of the clients and thread well you may be wondering what the hell is thread um, from what I know thread is what you use in you know, weaving or something. Thread in programming, if you have never used it before, is, uh, well, it, it, it's called threading. But another way of thinking of it is side by side. So it's running side by side, parallel with other processes. So when when this is happening, uh, actually a better example is right down here. I'm going to skip all this kind of stuff right now. Play, uh, do, 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 do. Player, th player thread, self thread, test variable. Okay, now what this is going to do, we have a four an infinite loop here. Okay, that's what that means forever. Uh, it's also similar to while true. And 
we are threading this uh, this test variable function and all it's doing is taking a parameter of a variable and testing if it's not equal to 100 and if it isn't it'll return now certain things you definitely want to thread especially in this case because when you're threading it you're basically telling it run this block of code right here while continuing this block of code up here that's what threading is it's running it on a separate thread um, if you took this out and just said self test variable it would get to this part and you're running an infinite loop and if the variable was you know not if if it was equal to a hundred you've just froze your game you've completely you've you've hung it because it's infinitely running code that will never be broken out of. This is actually kind of a crappy function. It's really useless, but, you know, I just kind of scratched it together at like 12.30 in the morning to kind of show an example of threading, and this was kind of, you know, what I decided to go with. But it's not very practical, so don't make a function like this. Please. 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 Um, but yeah, if, if the variable is 100, it's never going to return, you're never going to get back up here, and you froze your game, and that's bad. And if you distribute it, you'll piss a lot of people off. So, you're going to want this thread in there. And that's assuming this function is actually practical, like it is not right now. Anyways, back up to init. So we are threading the onplayer connect for every player. This is actually kind of... Uh, it you know, need it up here as well, because you're threading it on all of the clients. So if you didn't thread it, if you just, you know, if you didn't thread it, it would run this for every single player, and then it would do it one at a time, whereas up here it's doing all of them at, at relatively at once. Um, so it's a lot quicker, and it get things it gets things done. On player connect, it's running a for loop, and it is threading on player spawn for each individual player. Level wait till. I've included the comment here. Wait till is included. I believe it's in the common scripts utility, but I haven't looked in there for a while, so I'm not incredibly sure which one it actually comes from. Um, and what that's basically doing, it's waiting on a flag um, defined as connecting and for the specified player. And then once that flag has been set, it will run the next instruction, which is player thread on player spawned, which will run this beautiful function or subroutine right here. So these two lines, you will see these commonly at the top of functions, especially if they're using something like a for loop or they're threaded. Um, self end on disconnect, it's kind of self-explanatory, but the end on basically checks for a flag, and if it is, it will end the thread. It will, it will, uh, it will terminate the thread. So what it's basically saying here is on self, if the player disconnects from the game and the on player spawn thread, right? Because they're no longer in the game and and sees all other code and return um, to the to the game, right? Uh, level end on game ended, this will continually check if the game is ended, and if it is, it will end end it for everybody. Yeah, it's kind of similar to this, except for it checks game ended and it won't just end it for self, it'll end it for everybody. For loop, this is another infinite loop, and we're waiting until we receive the spawned player flag, and you may have guessed that actually that that's turned on if the player spawns in. Um, and until that flag is received, it won't execute these instructions. It, it does what it says it will. It will wait there, and then when that flag is received and that instruction is bypassed, it'll go down to here. What we're doing here is setting a variable called myVar. Um, we're attaching it to self, and we're setting it equal to 100. Um, so right here, what I was talking about earlier, if I remove that thread, I would freeze the game right now, because the variable is 100, and we are checking if the variable is not 100, and we're turning if it is not, but it is, so it won't turn. So it's a good thing we're threading it, eh? And it's a good thing this isn't actually a useful function. And, yeah. And then we're going to thread test variable with the argument. I'm not going to get into function headers and arguments and all this stuff today, but it's just going to go down here, and we already kind of talked about that. So I've just gone over the kind of structure of it. So just to recap, you have your includes or your preprocessor directives if you talk to a C++ guy, um, your main entry point, uh, which is init, and then you have your other functions conventionally named on player connect and on player spawn. We covered for loops briefly, uh, infinite loops that is. Uh, we covered what level is, it spawns it for all clients, self, only that client player for the player to find, wait till for flags, 
Um, we covered threading briefly. And uh, we, we covered variables. That's how you set a variable attached to self. It's a, it's a dot operator. And uh, later on in the tutorial series, we're going to get more in-depth with each part of this, but I just wanted to kind of start it off with something simple, overviewing it, and then we're actually going to get to coding, right? I'm just trying to show you everything about this. Now, if you haven't noticed already um, how this is different from C++, we're not doing things like void or int or char or anything like that. We don't have to declare data types because GSC is not statically typed, which means we don't have to define what data type we're returning or storing or whatever. And, you know, this can be good situationally, you know, um, it's a lot quicker to code in something that is, you know, not statically typed or as Python likes to call it, dynamically typed. Um, it's it's a lot quicker to code in that, but you can run into a lot of bugs in terms of, you know, the program not executing the way you wanted it to, because maybe you're expecting an integer, but you get a string, but it's not throwing an error, because it's it's not, you know, it's, it's dynamically typed, or uh, that's how Python likes to put it. So, you might, you might get unpredictable results. But in GSC, that's typically not too much of a problem. Now, I will cap off one more thing before I end this video. Typically, when you use for loops, pro this might happen in Black Ops 3. I knew it happened in Black Ops 2. You're gonna want to use sleeps, right? So it, I, it's been so long since I've done this, but I believe the sleep is done by milliseconds. And you're gonna want to sleep for like 50 milliseconds or something on the for loop. Oops. Uh, on the for loop and the reason for that is simply it, it relieves the stress on the processor because if you don't have that sleep it's going to keep running it incredibly fast and if you have all these threads running it's just it's really stressful on the processor and um, at one point on Black Ops 2 if you didn't put a sleep in there it would completely hang the game because the game just it couldn't handle it so that might happen in Black Ops 3, I'm not sure. I don't think it was as much of a problem World World at War, I, I can't remember. But I don't think it was as much of a problem. But in Black Ops 2, I know it was. So we might have to do that. It reduces the stress on the processor, and that's good. Reducing stress is always good. And, uh, yeah. So in the next video, we're going to be talking about syntax and all those beautiful things. Uh, you know, what these semicolons do, and what these brackets are here for. And if you've, if you've ever program before, you could probably skip that tutorial because it's very similar to other programming languages in that aspect, especially if you've done C or C++ or anything like that. Um, very, very similar. So yeah, so we're going to go over that in the next video, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like below, comment any questions or comments you guys may have had on the video, and subscribe. We're going to be getting into more videos very soon, and I will see you guys then.